Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of April 22nd, 2024, and I'm in the studio with Justin Binning, Ken Timmons, and special guest Alex Schilling. Justin, Ken, and Alex are from American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome to the podcast, gentlemen. Hey there, Molly. Hey, Molly. Molly. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. I know we took an additional week off so that we could have our special guest today. And we are going to come back to Alex very quickly here. We want to explore something a little different today, which is the OSB market. However, for our regular listeners, let's just start right away with a quick recap of the lumber market over the last three weeks, and then we'll uh, move along. I feel like we should, Kenny and I are kind of looking at each other like we should go old school Rona Rochambeau here. <laughs> <laughs> lumber market out West is pretty stale, unenthusiastic. There's just not a lot of... In terms of fear, need, and greed, there's no fear. There's some underlying need, and uh, everybody's trying to get as much juice out of the squeeze as they can. There's not to say that the trade's dead. We're, I'd say we're still putting up 75% of the volume you would have expected for April to produce this time of the year, but there's just not a lot of people extending their inventories out far. Order files typically first part of May, maybe mid-May. I don't think anybody's really scratched the backside of May or beginning of June on most stuff. And that's across all sectors, whether it's multifamily, single family, export, doesn't matter. High grade fur products have corrected in price a touch since we last spoke three weeks ago. Not all products, high grade MSR still remains very tight. Some of one and better select struck lower high grades, if that even makes sense, have corrected a little bit. Web stock's been pretty resilient, even though it shouldn't be. That's a product that I would have expected to fall in price quite a bit over the last 60 days, along with stud pricing. It hasn't. Six and seven foot's hung in there really well. For guys who use eight, 10, 12 foot web stock, that's almost not moved uh, an inch two weeks. Production has not gotten better out of the West by any means. There's a few more sawmills that seem like they're kind of wavering on the edge of permanent closures. Time of the year where forest fires are going to become a significant issue again very dry out here in the West. I know one of the guys who trades next to me has a farm and he says he has a creek that's always wet through Memorial Day beginning of June. It's been dry for two or three weeks. Just an indication of how dry some of the land is out here in the West obviously will be an issue as we work through the summer months. I was going to say too, I, I read an article the other day, like in Western Canada, like this is as dry as it's been in like decades. So that's not, that's not good. Yep. But uh, yeah, I would say with pine, if there was someone that was bullish out there for spring, their hopes have been shattered. You know, the spring push that we were all kind of hoping would come certainly hasn't came. We've talked about this trend that we've been in, you know, in the uptrend, the downtrend and how it's really mirrored itself on each sides. That, that trend has stayed true. And if we date this back, you know, six weeks, we're at a pivot point, what I believe in the market as we move into the month of May. Um, few reasons for that. <clears throat> One, the overall price level is at lows that we've seen in the last five years on some products. So you're, I mean, we're looking at levels that we haven't seen in, in quite some time. And so when we throw the word investment levels around, we're there. Now, with that said, Ken talks about fear, need, and greed as market drivers. You know, the fear isn't there in terms of being able to get wood or fiber and the fear of not being able to get it in a timely matter really doesn't exist either. Need, I think Ken said it perfectly. Yeah, there's certainly some need out there, but when you talk about Econ 101, supply and demand, where we are at in a fiber base in, in terms of the U.S. South is outpacing what current demand is. So all things said... You know, we've, we've kind of given ourselves a trading range. This one seems to be going a bit lower, but we're kind of against the wall. I think the producers are in terms of some decisions have to be made over the, you know, in the next course couple of weeks. What, what does that mean? I, I do think there's a possibility that we see some curtailments in the U.S. South. Mills certainly don't want to have to do that. But at the same time, you know, where the pricing is, something's got to give, right? So it's either... Getting the pricing pushed up with a good surge in demand, 
or mills are going to have to start curtailing some shifts. There have been some murmurs that some of that has taken place. There's nothing been officially released, so I can't say for certain that that is the case. But I wouldn't be surprised if this trend continues over the next week to two weeks that we would see some sort of notice in the U.S. South from one, two, could be multiple manufacturers in the U.S. South. So it's kind of where we're at, you know, economic headwinds, you know, all the things that we thought we'd maybe get some reprieve on, you know, inflation would cool down, interest rates would start to come back. As some were suggesting the first half of the year, we haven't seen it. So the overall cost of housing with interest rates in between is really just stalled home building a bit. So, yeah. Yeah. Sounds like we've got a few things to keep our eyes on for the next few weeks here, for sure. All right. Well, I'd like to shift our discussion a little bit, as I alluded to at the beginning, and I'd like to introduce Alex Schilling of AIFP. Alex, can you just start by giving us a little bit of your background and introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah. How's it going? Thanks for having me. It's a cool opportunity to come in and share some of the things that I've done. I started at American International in 2018. I've sat in the panel department the entire time, and it's given me an opportunity to trade a wide variety of products from specialty panels all the way down to commodity sheathing, OSB in particular. And it's a very cool opportunity at American International to get a big, broad scope of what we do as a country as far as consumption of manufactured products, as well as multifamily and single family housing construction. And then, you know, non commodity panels that go into a variety of manufacturing facilities. So that's just kind of been my background is kind of trading a wide variety of customer base and, you know, learning how to have fun in between. So that sounds great. Well, I'd like to pick your brain a little bit today about the OSB market for our panel manufacturers and anyone else in our industry that's using OSB for one purpose or another. It seems like, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, the OSB market really seems to be taking off, especially in comparison to what the guys just said about the lumber market. What insights can you give us? Are uh, prices going to continue to climb and, you know, just kind of giving us a little background about why things are maybe where they're at, kind of where you expect them to go? You know, some of the similar things that the guys just touched on, like curtailments potentially coming up, et cetera, for the OSB market. Yeah, I think it's a great question. I mean, ultimately, whether you've been in the business for six years like myself or 40 years, like some of the people that I do business with. Basically, since end of September of 2023 till today, you've had a very interesting market where the market bottomed aggressively and there was a mass amount of buying that was done in October that serviced jobs anywhere from December all the way through now. And in turn, there's been a good amount of delayment in jobs that consume of, of wide variety of products and volumes that really control the market sector when it comes to the mills production. Now, I I think looking into 2024, Mills saw what Justin and Ken alluded to, which is the economic headwinds, and they tried to approach the market in a facet where they don't want to overproduce it. I think what they learned prior to the COVID years is that when they overproduce a product, they're going to get a mill net return that is not favorable. They're going to get pricing that is extremely compressed. The market's going to consume them. The products, big box stores are going to consume the products have very low net returns, if any, for the mills. So what they've decided to do and what they decided to do over the last couple quarters was fix maintenance projects, put in the new press, unforeseen issues that drove the pricing to where it's at today. And ultimately, the consumption of the last six months has been a lot greater than I think that anybody had anticipated. So the takeaway was a lot greater. They they anticipated the takeaway to be a lot lower. And then ultimately, I think, it drove the price up dramatically. There was some unforeseen issues with what's going on in the Middle East as far as wars with the impact of import OSB coming to the U.S. that drove out product in a timely fashion that was once normally on the ground all the time that the domestic mills faced as far as a competition standpoint. So going back to the simple supply and demand economics, it created an opportunity to where mills could kind of hold the line and get paid for what they are producing. And in turn, it's left a lot of guys to where they're at today, kind of scratching their head, wondering where we go from here. So I guess that's probably my next question is, where do we go from here from your perspective? And I I realize you don't have a magic eight ball if only those things worked, right? You know, what do you sort of foresee coming in the next, say, three to six months with regard to OSB? And, you know, again, just looking at that supply demand, obviously, 
the guys were just talking about the fact that business is a little slow. They're about said 70, 75 percent of where you've been. Is that similar for what you see coming up for OSB or, you know, just generally, where do you see this going? Yeah, for where we currently sit, prices have leveled off at a peak level to where guys are having guys that are going out to sell additional jobs that have not already taken off are having trouble selling the new higher prices. That combated with the interest rates has made a perfect storm of the inability to go out there and capture a lot of business going into Q3 and Q4 of this year. The jobs that have been taken are delayed across the country. Some have been canceled. Some guys have already covered those jobs. And so that, in addition to the manufacturing sector, as far as distribution goes as well, distribution, national distribution, corporate has basically tuned these guys down and told them to run inventories lower. And so what's being consumed in the market today is not from the mill standpoint, but from the customer standpoint. So what that's already been purchased is being consumed versus what that needs to be purchased is getting kind of put on the back burner. So where do we go from here? I think from a customer standpoint, they feel the need for prices to come down. Some of the flooring standpoint is probably more relatively priced, fairly priced in the marketplace than something on the thinner panel side. The thinner panels ran very aggressively and are above levels that guys have sold jobs at on uh, thicker panels like flooring. So it's created this equilibrium that's way out of whack and guys are in, in very scared stepping in and buying any sort of inventory levels at the pricing that they see today. Now, the flip side of that is all the major producers are strong in order file. So you have some of the big players out of Canada that have taken order files all the way into the end of May. Touching on what you guys were speaking about earlier, there's a hundred fires active in Vancouver, BC right now. A couple that are right on top of some of the largest producers of OSB in Canada, which is very early. It's very early for fire season to be taking effect in, in Canada. And so we're kind of at a stalemate within the market. Guys are clearing out inventories at less than replaceable levels and the mills are holding firm knowing that there's business out there that's been uncovered. Okay. You didn't say curtailment, although I heard you say maintenance, and I understand that has a very similar effect on the market, but you're not saying that there are going to be any even temporary close downs for any time in the near future. No, I think the mills have done a very strategic job on how they've approached the market as far as quietly curtailing. You know, I think curtailment is probably not a term that they want to throw out there in any news format, but I think they're doing it whether we think they are or not. They're doing it in strategic ways. So, maintenance projects, not making quite as much. I think we should find out. There should be some consensus reports coming out in the next few weeks that should give us an insight on what was produced year over year in a plus minus percentage basis. Okay. Well, the last question I always ask the guys, but I'm going to start with you, Alex, is do you have any advice for our component manufacturers over the next couple of weeks? So I'll extend that same question to you before I ask them to wrap up and just say what sort of advice you have folks purchasing OSB in the market right now. The best advice that I have is, you know, don't get overextended. Be smart, be strategic, and understand that pricing is what it is and pay attention to what the mills are doing. A lot of the mills have done a very good job at staying on the same page and moving in a a cohesive fashion. And ultimately, when you get distribution at levels compressed and out as far as they have, that there's going to be probably another buying event in the next 30 to 45 days. And so... As pricing is volatile as it is right now with kind of a two-tiered market approach where it's being sold underneath replacement, might be a good opportunity to step in and uh, get some material at some less than peak levels because it's not going to get compressed to the levels in the middle of summer that it would have gotten to down in Q3, late Q3 of 2023. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate your expertise on that today. I'll extend the same question to both Ken and JB. Do you have any advice for our component manufacturers over the next couple of weeks on how to handle their lumber buying as we uh, continue in this market? Oh, uh, what's that? Remember that old company? It's like no fear. Yeah. With yeah. Beards and yeah. That. Ken's shaking his head. He's acting cool. I know I got some people there. Know. They know what I'm talking about. We were rocking yeah. that back in the school days. It was cool. Anyways, no fear. Uh, you look at pricing. If you're a speculator, today's your day. If you're a guy that has to buy some wood quick because you need it, today's your day. Like, you know, in terms of overall pricing, it it doesn't get much better than this, and I don't think it's going to get. 
much better than this short term. So take advantage of of the deals that are out there. I mean, it's this is as good as it's gotten in several years. So what are you going to lose? You know, you need to buy some wood or you like having and buying six months out because you got this going on and that and you want to lock in a price. Today's your lucky day. So that's my advice. You know, there's very little to to no downside risk at this point, in my opinion. Say the same thing. Stay frosty. Keep your head on a swivel. Look for deals. It's all about deals right now. Even if you're fat and happy and don't need any deals, I'd pick your top three toughest to cover items and just establish what you think a really knockout deal on that would be. Because who knows, you might be able to secure that. And to Alex's point, at this point, heading into summer, things could turn on a dime, right? Do I think that the system's going to get white hot and we're going to 2 million housing starts? Absolutely not. But could the supply chain and the Ecom 101 balance look a lot different in two, three, four weeks? Absolutely. So I would just say, be thinking about what your wish list would be in the off chance that you could line up, you know, some hopes and dreams at a great price. And then just stick in close contact with both the, the people who are selling for you, because I'm hearing there's a lot of jobs being bid, and the vendors that you're getting inventory from. Because the ecosystem will, ch- one, one of these mornings from the time you have your coffee to the time you drive home in the afternoon, it will change. And it's probably going to happen sometime in the next 30 days. I think that wraps up our episode for this week. Justin, Ken, and special guest, Alex, thank you so much for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I've enjoyed our time together, albeit brief, and look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Thanks, Molly. Thank you, Molly. I appreciate you. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com. 